Make a date with Rev. Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online. Truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Benizia Marque of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams meets behind the trade fair, um, behind Zenith College, on Sundays in the morning for morning services, and the midweek services on Wednesdays in the evening. And this morning, I'd like to capture my thoughts in just a couple of phrases. Take me to court. Uh, now, uh, uh, why this expression? Why this expression is is very very important for me. Now, in First Samuel chapter twelve, verse three, the people of Israel had come to a place of transition, and then uh, leadership was changing. I mean, things were going to change. A new person was going to come into office. Things were going to happen. There's going to be a shift in the in the leadership structure of Israel, and Samuel was the he was the last bastion or the last citadel of the prophetic ruling, I mean, Israel at that time. And it was time for transition. Israel was transiting into monarchy. And um, it was very, very important. We were transiting from judgeship to the monarchy, you know. And uh, Samuel then comes to the people. And then Samuel says, you know, just before he does everything to hand over power to um, Saul, who God had chosen, in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and 1 Samuel chapter 10, the Bible says now Saul had been chosen and now Israel, I mean, Samuel stands before the whole of Israel and says, my duties are done, my responsibilities are over. And he said, I'm handing over. It's not time for me to move on. I'm moving on in life. I'm moving on. I've, I've, I've led you. I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. Then Samuel tells them something. He said, everybody gather and testify against me. That means everyone take me to court. And then he began to list a couple of things. Have I stolen from you? Have I raided the national kitty? Have I done this? Have I done this? Have I done this? And he began to elaborate on different things that he wants them to say. If there's any witness here, if there's anybody, and I've done these things, come forward boldly and take me to court. That means come and speak. Speak up. Don't be afraid. Now, I find that very, very interesting. An interesting aspect of leadership, that is leadership with integrity. Leadership with integrity. Now, someone knew that he had not done anything. He had not stolen anybody's money. He had not done anything. So he said, come forward. I am looking forward to the time when, when leaders are transiting, they can boldly look at, see, listen, it doesn't have to be people's opinion. It has to be an internal opinion of ourselves saying, we have not done this, we have not done that, we have not done this. It is called accountability. So what someone was saying, this position that I have was, there's responsibility. God gave me the responsibility. But my responsibility was not only to God, but my responsibility was also to you. So he says to them, let's go to the courts of God. And you, come and hold me accountable to those responsibilities. So, see, with responsibility comes authority. And then with authority comes accountability. And someone said, I have discharged my duties responsibly. And I've held authority responsibly. Then he said, now you come and summarize who I am and testify against me. Have I stolen anybody's thing? Have I misappropriated any funds? Have I done things? Have I walked the path of corruption? Have I walked the lane of corruption? Someone said, come. And take me to court. I wish that all leaders would come to that particular place. I'm not only talking about secular. I'm also talking about the spiritual. It's for all of us that we can stand and say, now you come and testify against me. And he spoke about different, different things that give them different areas to, to look at. And it is very, very important for us to have this per pers perspective in life. Listen, leadership is responsibility. Leadership comes with accountability. You may not be accountable to, to men, but God is going to hold us all accountable. God is going to hold leadership accountable. 
It doesn't matter what kind of political party or what your political persuasions may be. God holds us accountable. And you know one thing? God knows. Men may not know, but God knows. We need to come to the place to recognize that we hold in trust for God, that we are shepherds of his flock, that he will hold us accountable. And you know what? We must be free to take in people who think that something is going wrong. And then they'll come and tell, you have done this, you have done that. There's no need for them. I mean, if I was someone, I said to someone, you must be very bold. Because what you're doing is opening yourself very wide for attack and for necessary criticism. But someone was bold because he knew in his heart that he had not done anything wrong. So he said, come and testify against me. I wish leadership, and I'm talking about leadership, all over Africa and everywhere elsewhere. I wish we would come to the place where integrity is going to scream and where we are not going to be afraid to be probed, where we are not going to be afraid to be investigated without the fear of reprisals, without the fear of being um, visited with all sorts of things. You know, we, sh we, we don't need that. I believe that this is the right way to go. We need people of integrity. We need people of accountability who are going to hold positions of authority and a sense of accountability to God and to the people. You know what? Take me to court. See you later.